Hey guys, EST here, and it is starting to get really cold in Wisconsin. It's about uh, 45 degrees out, so in my house currently it's, uh, let's see, thermostat says 67. I believe this says about 68 if you line up your head to it. So I thought, let's try something I've always wondered. If the power's out, uh, my furnace is not going to turn on, even though it's a, believe it or not, oil-burning furnace, because my house is like 100 years old, like literally. Uh, but also, those of you with, like, baseboard electric heat, boy, you're in trouble. And, I mean, you can't just take a, a random electric heat or plug it into the wall and turn it on because, well, the power's out. So that can actually get really dangerous for your pipes. They might freeze, and for you, because you might freeze. So uh, heating in a modern house is a big thing in case of a power outage, and, well, snow has been known to cause power outages. Uh, that and, like, ice buildup on lines, I've seen that. Well, it's more of a rural area problem, but even in a city, it can knock out power for many, many hours, if not a day or two. So heating is going to become a problem. You can't just start a fire in the middle of your house. Or can you? So I picked up this stuff called, uh, this is Terra Flame. Uh, I used to have a different brand of it, actually. Oh yeah, Real Flame. Uh, I ran a, an initial test with this. Uh, this one was red colored, that one's not, but it's basically gelled alcohol, most likely isopropyl alcohol, might be ethanol, doesn't really matter. Um, and that burns absolutely clean, and it even says, it's, uh, clean burning fire gel, it says. Um, it has a two to three hour burn time, which, so, you know, if you're in your house for 24 hours, it's not going to help. But sometimes if you just raise the temperature you're good. But see, it might buy you time. If you can get it up to like 73 in your house, it's going to take a while to lose that heat, and the temperature differential is the biggest thing. So if you want to keep it at 70 and it's 30 outside, the temperature difference is 40, and then if it was 50 outside, we'll say, then it's only 20. So it should, in theory, take about half the energy, half the watts, half the fuel, half the BTUs, however you want to say it, uh, to maintain the temperature difference, and as you get closer to 50, the cool-off will slow down. So you'll be losing heat at half the rate when your air temperature hits 60 if it's 50 out than when it did at 70. So these are actually designed specifically for fake fireplaces with like fake concrete logs in them and you just put a couple of them in the back and they even make crackling ones. Uh, and then you can just see the flames and it actually functions as a heating device. And I think you're supposed to run two to four of them so I got two. And uh, currently, with the way I have my house closed off, we're trying to heat about 400 square feet of it. So if it even heats up to, like, 72, uh, that'll be interesting. So I have no idea what's going to happen. I just did uh, basically a smoke detector test with the uh, true flame that I had before. There we go. Wish I had a paint opener, but the instructions actually say to use a screwdriver. So so I've got everything clear, everything cleaned in the way. I've got a fire extinguisher right next to it. I've got a bucket of water, and I also have a fire blanket. Also, I have a carbon monoxide detector right off camera. Um, so we're doing this about as safely as possible. But I don't think that alcohol can burn uh, with carbon monoxide coming off. Now, propane, that's a different story. I do have a propane burner, but unlike the, uh, the common one, the one everybody buys, the little buddy, mine's just a outdoor who cares one, uh, for outdoor use only, uh, the little buddy has a low oxygen sensor and it will turn off the flow of propane. But uh, I have one of those just blast heaters, you know, little five, ten dollars screwed on the top of a propane cylinder and light it ones that's completely unsafe. You really shouldn't use that inside a house. But these are designed to be burned indoors, and if they don't work or if they're not enough, uh, I also have a little backup plan. So uh, uh, the heat coming off of these is immense. I mean, it, it's higher than if I were to turn this burner on. So I'm not sure how many watts that is. But I know that a 1,500-watt space heater would be about right for heating up, you know, four to 500 square feet in this house with the level of insulation that I have. But, uh, yeah, this produces about 7-inch flames. I think I'm going to move this over onto the microwave just for uh, a nice even comparison, otherwise obviously it'll get really hot right next to it. And uh, I'll check back in about an hour, see what uh, what the temperature's doing. By the way, how amazing is this lighter? Look at this thing. Oh my gosh, I love this. It was like $5.99 at the gas station. This is so cool. All right, just to prove I'm being scientific about this, uh, we got the carbon monoxide detector. It's currently working. I'm just gonna wave it around above it. Um, Yeah, nothing. So I'm going to leave this on the back of the stove and figure that's where the oxygen shortage would come from. Uh, speaking of that, an oxygen shortage can cause uh, combustion that results in carbon monoxide. But I don't think with this type of fuel that's true. But still, I do need oxygen to breathe. <laughs> so I can't figure out like how to chemically figure out the volume of oxygen in the house versus how much this would take up. Because I'd have to know the fuel's total amount of chemical energy and all this stuff. But I don't think something this small... Even burning for two to three hours in, in this large of an area would be a problem. But 
I actually do have some emergency bottled oxygen. I'm going to be pretty pissed if I have to use it because it was expensive. Um, but it's a couple minutes worth of just fresh air on a mask in case I start feeling woozy. And the first thing I'll do is go outside. But uh, also this will uh, alarm. Right here you can see it. Uh, if we start getting monoxide generation. Shouldn't happen though. So it's been just like a minute and the carbon monoxide detector is already beeping, but I happen to know what the alarm sounds like from the test button. That's not the alarm. So I think it's the batteries. Well, the old batteries tested at uh, 1.5 volts on the dot. So that's kind of concerning. Um, but this thing did start beeping after ooh, probably several months of use. So, and they were really cheap batteries. So I just thought, oh, they're down. I don't know. I got new ones in here. We're going to see what it does. Set that right there, and uh, we'll see if it does the angry beeping. You know, it's only been about 10 minutes, but boy, these things are blasting. It's starting to feel a little bit warmer, but also standing right next to it, I'm just getting bombarded by infrared, so of course it's going to feel warmer. But I walked into the other room and at least uh, stuck my hand up to the ceiling, and it is a lot hotter. Even right, right here above it, I'd say maybe four or five feet away if I put my hand on the ceiling, that ear feels like it's about 85 degrees. So I think this is heating it up pretty quick. So as long as we're clear on the monoxide, uh, I'm going to call this a safe and effective way to heat up your uh, um, house in an emergency. So these things, unfortunately, because it's kind of hard to make like a, a gelled, probably cellulose free because it's smokeless uh, material that can basically burn, but also contains alcohol, but also doesn't separate or liquidate or vaporize um, too, too much. Uh, they're about four fifty a piece, four dollars and fifty cents U.S. right now. So I think the cheapest I've ever seen them is like three ninety. Uh, but the cool thing is they are made in America, so you know, shout out to this brand. But I will say, even uh, about twenty five feet away in the furthest room around the corner, it's starting to just kind of smell a little odd, like just something's burning. I mean, I've gotten more of a smell from just my wonderful cooking mistakes, but uh, the other thing is no smoke alarm so far, and that's not a heat-induced one. Uh, that is a pure smoke detector. Very new, very modern model. And uh, boy, if I even boil the wrong thing or get one drop of uh, oil on this hair coil, oh boy, I get to hear that thing go off. So I'd say about one quarter of the time that I'm cooking, that smoke alarm will go off, and I heard that's pretty common. So basically anything will set that smoke alarm off, and if it's not going off, then it must just be some, some dust burn off, some stuff in the air, just some things heating up, whatever, or, you know, kind of the power of suggestion. I wouldn't say it's my imagination. It definitely does not smell like fresh air. Um, but also, uh, I don't feel lightheaded at all because, uh, I mean, this has only been burning for 10, 15 minutes and I don't think we've burned up all the oxygen yet. Well, it's been about 15 to 20 minutes, probably not even, I probably should have been timing this, but I, I thought it would take so long, I would just be like, oh, it's been about an hour, you know, let's go watch a Netflix episode or something, but uh, currently the thermostat, which is about 5 feet that way on the wall, says it's 69, and the um, microwave thermometer, that uh, this, this little guy right here, says it's about 71, so... Uh, even in the other room, it is heated up significantly. Uh, also, to check for low oxygen, I did a whole bunch of very high-intensity cardio for a couple minutes, and I feel fine. So, obviously, that would uh, cause it to get to me more than if I'm sitting around doing nothing. So, carbon monoxide uh, meter hasn't been beeping at all. Apparently, it's just really picky about batteries. And uh, I even took a uh, white glove, a brand new one, uh, got it a little bit wet on a couple of the fingers, and then rubbed the ceiling... Because uh, my ceiling is also white. No soot, no residue whatsoever. And that's about eh, three feet above it. So I'm going to call this a success. I'm just, I'm going to wait another maybe 10, 15 minutes and just see how hot it actually gets in here. But this is amazing. I, I probably burned off less than 50 cents worth of fuel between them because they're both almost completely full. And it's up to an acceptable temperature already. So I only had to change it, you know, what, three, four degrees Fahrenheit? But still... I think it would take several hours for it to cool back down to the mid-60s, definitely. So this, uh, in case it's not too, too cold out, I'd call this a pretty effective measure. So if you think about it, these are designed for indoor fireplace units that are completely fake, and the only thing I'm missing is the stupid fake cement-painted logs and the little metal unit. So I'm using this for exactly what it's designed for, an indoor fake fireplace heating unit just without actually buying the unit, because all of it's cosmetic except for the fuel, if you think about it. And I do still maintain that this is safer than um, propane. Also, pretty easy to put out. You just drop the um, uh, lid back on, which is not the easiest thing in the world, but if you just got, like, anything out, just like that. I mean, that was real hard. Might as well uh, relight it there. Woo, hello, a little poof there because it's still evaporating. So uh, I'll come back in uh, 10, 15 minutes, see how hot we can get it in here.
All right, it's been another eh, probably eight minutes, I think. I'm still not timing it. I know, very professional channel. Uh, no alarms, no problems, no smoke alarms, no nothing. Uh, I'm starting to just get the, more of like a burning kind of sense in the air in the other room, which is pretty far away. Um, it's kind of got a metallic tinge to it, so I think it might be like steel or aluminum or whatever this is, maybe little tiny particles getting in the air. So the air quality drops quite a bit, but I heard uh, those standard propane burner stoves, you know, with the propane around the coil there, um, they cause so much uh, indoor air pollution, as they call it, just pollutants, carbon, that kind of stuff in the air. It's, uh, th they're recommending people, like, leave or open the windows for, like, 30 minutes after cooking even once or something. It's, like, horrible. A report just came out about that in, like, 2020. So, I'm not surprised that just any open flame in your house that's near metal and burning dust in the air or something is gonna cause some pollutants. It's not exactly a long-term solution, but, uh... But, I mean, people run propane stoves all the time. They're not exactly dropping dead left and right, so... Uh, I think the worst you could say about this is it might aggravate someone's asthma or something like that. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm currently standing here shirtless because it is... Uh, 73 on the microwave thermometer, and it's 71 according to the wall uh, thermostat. So, yeah, and uh, we're, we're burning through fuel here. I mean, it probably burned, I'd say, since I opened it about an inch. There's probably about three to four inches left. So maybe, what, a quarter of it? And they're saying, what, a two to three hour burn time? Eh, it seems odd. Maybe it's been longer than I thought. But, uh, yeah, it's warm enough in here. And like I said, it's 46 degrees out, which is fairly cold. Not really for Wisconsin, but you guys might consider it cold. So I would say that this is officially probably the best way to heat your house in case of emergency. Uh, nothing else really comes to mind. I mean, any amount of wood or, you know, burning furniture or whatever, unless it's in a fireplace and even then, any amount of smoke is going to cause a severe issue, like an actual risk of danger. Uh, humans just simply cannot breathe smoke, so I'm glad <laughs> these aren't smoking at all. So I think I'm going to put these out, and the big thing is they, they're pretty hot. I mean, it, it says don't even handle them for 20 minutes. It says right in the directions right there to not do that. Um, but the whole time, they're still evaporating very lightweight alcohol, so it gets really, like, alcohol-scented and fumey uh, when you put them out. But since there's such hot air in there, I wouldn't say immediately seal the lid on, because it'll probably explode and pop back off. You know, it's a little bit of air pressure, but, um... Uh, then, if the lid stays on, the air density is going to be really funny, and it'll kind of suck the lid in and be hard to remove the next time. So, you pretty much just got to let it vent. So, if you had an oven mitt or some kind of th way to pick those up, maybe a canning jar grabber or something, I would just immediately, when you put them out, bring them outside. I think I might repeat this tomorrow for a follow-up video and see if we can do it with, uh, these right here. Um, what are they called? Chafers? Uh, sternos? That kind of thing? Um, these have a wick. They're a lot lower output than this craziness, but these are literally designed to heat your house, basically. Um, so I'm going to probably light up like four or five of these. i got quite a few. Um, but I, I know these can, uh, the cheaper ones, can kick off a lot of aluminum oxide, which is strange considering aluminum doesn't even melt until 1,200 degrees. But uh, I don't know. I've had the really cheap ones at a indoor event start to just give everybody a funny taste in their mouth and everybody started coughing. So uh, hopefully these are high-quality ones. I did buy them in America. Uh, but that should be interesting, because uh, you can find those a lot easier than this. I had to go to three stores to find a place that had gelled alcohol. So, uh, not the easiest thing to find. And I happen to know those chafers tend to be about a dollar a piece if you buy them in bulk. And those, as well, obviously, are built for indoor use. Because they're meant for, um, you know, big uh, events with meals. Or any kind of, like, a picnic or a wedding, I suppose. Um, you just put them under those big aluminum dishes and they keep it warm. And uh, those, plus I guess the little buddy heater, but even then that's still propane-based, it makes me nervous. Um, those are the only three that are technically rated for indoor use, and, and even these say well-ventilated. I mean, it's just a safety thing, liability thing. Um, and also, i got to say, some of the smell I might be getting is the uh, label burning a little bit there. You might notice that. So there is probably a little bit of carbon being put into the air, and that's probably what I'm uh, smelling and tasting. But, uh, yeah, it's getting even hotter in here, so I think we're going we're gonna to call this a success. Um... I'd pick up a couple of these. I mean, you can get a six-pack of these for, like, nothing. I mean, like I said, they're about four bucks a piece. And there you go, emergency heat. And then you won't be uh, shivering and having uh, uh, pipes burst. Although, I will say, my basement can soak up an enormous amount of heat and just dissipate it into the concrete because it's not insulated in any way. And that's a different story compared to upstairs. So I might repeat this in my basement at some point because uh, emergency heating is just very important. So this might become a little bit of a series on my channel. So uh, definitely leave a like if you found this interesting. I'd recommend anybody pick these up because they seem safe, appropriate, and effective. And I will see you guys next video.